Today we're going to be walking through the step of creating an encrypted drive on an open media vault. Now, if you know my drive, well, if you followed my channel, my NAS drive took a dump the other day. And I do have all of the data in my backups over my home office, minus the few things that uh, were added to it since then. But I always keep those on the computer until everything is in that backup. So they have all, all that data that should be on there that's not already in my backup system is on my various computers right now. And I did go ahead and start backing things up to some local drives until I make sure I have this all set up right. You can see I'm running an older version of Open Media Vault at 5.6. And I just don't have any interest in upgrading to the 6. First, I don't really like the UI of version 6. Uh, it's acceptable, but I like this. It works. And I do keep this thing off of the Internet. No network connections to or from the Internet. So I'm okay with this being like it is, especially in the current circumstance where this thing is not on all the time anymore either. It's really only on when I'm actively transferring files or actively using the system. So I'm okay with this. And then who knows, maybe down the road we find some little uh, cabin in the middle of the woods and want to build something out. Maybe we'll certainly go with six or maybe seven might be out by then. And then we will proceed. Now we do need to encrypt it in case somebody walks off with a disk. You know, some catastrophic event occurs. You know, some looter comes in, steals the drive. So I do want to make sure it is, it is uh, encrypted. So we're going to walk through that step here. So the first step is you go into your disks, and uh, the first disk is our operating system SSD. The second disk here is the actual disk that we are working with. And so this guy here, you want to start by wiping this. And I've already wiped it, so I'm not going to actually do it, but I just hit the quick wipe, and that will wipe the drive. The reason you need to do that is if you don't wipe the drive first, then when you go down to the set up the encryption, it will not show up down here in the device list. So if you jump right into the encryption, and the encryption is added with a plugin, by the way. So if you do not start with that, then it's going to uh, not show up in the list. You'll be like, why is it not showing up? Eh, because it sees the system as in use in some way, and so it doesn't want to risk that. So we're just going to call this NAS data. And then we give it a good passphrase. Make sure you are remembering your passphrase. I'm just going to use the passphrase I had in production in the last instance. That should make sure that everything is all set up right. And I don't need to change any of my access files to it on my, my best buddy Cody or other things that need to access this system. So once we hit create, do you want to encrypt this device? All existing data will be deleted. Yes, we are going to encrypt the device. So the first step is going to be to decrypt the device and then unlock it. Once it is unlocked, then we are going to go out down into the um, into your um, file systems and add it as a file system. So do you want to change these configurations? Yes, we do. Right, with the configuration change, we want to come over here, unlock the drive. So enter your passphrase here to unlock the drive. So now our drive is unlocked. So now we're going to go down to File Systems. And then you'll see here that we have, these are the four different areas on our existing SD card. So we're not messing with that. The one of these two, I believe it's the 646. This is the old dead drive. So eventually we will kick that out of our system. This one here, which is also missing, is our backup drive. And that is a backup that is at my home office. That's where we're going to retrieve all of our data from at a later date. And so we have that. Uh, this drive there, of course, stays there, but it will only show us online when we are... Um, when we plug that drive in to do our backups. And we use our backups with the uh, rsync option. So we're going to create a new file system, and we need to select a device. So we're going to go to the Lux Encrypted Container, and then give this a label. We'll call this NAS Data. And then File System is ext4. Do you really want to format it? All will be removed. So now it's going to... Uh, go in here and set everything up and create all of the data structures. You'll see that uh, it's going to be doing this a little bit slowly. So we'll go ahead and pause the video here and come back when this is done doing its thing. 
creating the file system is completed correctly. Let's go ahead and close that out. And we should see that one. That's this one right up here, dev dm0 up here. I thought there should have been a configuration change. So there's my configuration change. We'll hit apply on that. Configuration change is made. That is mounted. So now if we go down to shared folders and we want to come down here and we should now be able to move these down to our NAS data. Hit save. Do you really want to relocate the share folder? Contents of the share folder will not be moved automatically. So that is one of the things that you will have to do. And we're not going to make that backup, that change quite yet, because I'm going to do all of these first. And then we're going to do the backups all at once. So if you ever do this, you will have to manually move all of the data. Since in my instance, the data seems to be on a corrupted drive, I'm going to manually move the data back over from my uh, old backup system when I get back to State College. But this will allow me to continue to use the NAS with the data systems that I have. Now, I do need to make sure I don't accidentally change that backup drive since that's a different file folder. So that's the one in the line there that's different. So this is the one we are skipping. That's our backup. So now all those are made. Now we will apply our changes. This might take a few more minutes. That configuration change is made. So hopefully with any luck, when we log into the system, let's go down to network and we might have to manually go into there. Let's give this a try. And now we actually see all of these. I always go in with this one here. This is kind of like a root master folder. And now everything looks good. Going to documents, of course, everything is empty. So let's go ahead and copy a file. Let's, uh, let me just go to my desktop there real quick and let me copy a file. All right, so we're gonna paste in a file here. So you can see, oh, that is way bigger than I thought it was. 15.8 gigabytes. What is on that thing? Well, we're not going to wait for it to go the whole hour. I have no earthly idea what's in that server folder. Let me check that out. All right, so that ended up being a, a very large photo archive from camp last year. <laughs> That's why that was so big. I moved that out of there and just moving one gigabyte of data over now. And I've actually verified it, pulled up on my secondary computer here and um, uh, went ahead and logged into the server on this side as well. Hit a reload and I can actually see those files actively being added to the server across here. So now we have everything all set up. Now my server is completely ready to go. All of the file structures are set up right. And now we should be all set to have everything set for migrating the data back over here. So now I should just be able to pop this disk out of here, migrate the data in whatever the best way, and then now we'll reset up the syncing into the uh, into the other backup drive as soon as um, we do that. So the next time I do a full system backup, it is we're going to be a lot more cautious just to make sure everything is set. And I might even go into the R-Sync and make sure I'm not having it um, remove files if they've changed, like we're going to adjust the rsync settings later. Maybe if enough people are interested, I might talk about that process when I actually come up to get that done. But anyway, that is how we can get everything all finished up here, how we are migrating all of our data and, um, setting up a new drive to replace the one that went bad without having to nuke the entire OMV and setting everything up. So there you have it, folks. Thanks for watching. Let me know your thoughts down below.